Hey, Emmett. Andrew, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, very good. Thanks. It looks as though we're in different rooms on camera, I think, but we can confirm that we are in the same room. We are. Yeah, you've got your nice little green screen behind you. That's it. Yep, we are. We're actually, uh, we're, we're kind of uh, recording from our studio here in the office here in uh, at Central uh, Grosvenor Business Towers, right? So um, it's pretty cool. I think this is the second time we're recording in here, right? Yeah, yeah, it's quite it's quite nice actually. I think yeah. the uh, soundproofing and stuff is um, is quite interesting as well. Once yeah, you got those the egg, like a sponge egg carton. I don't know if you remember back in the day for British uh, listeners and viewers, Lenny Henry uh, with old Delbert Wilkins when he used to do the. Uh, you remember Delbert Wilkins yeah. had the pirate radio <laughs> station and he had all the his home studio <laughs> in his uh, in his flat. So no, we've obviously got a nice setup here, and we're in the process, guys, of. Uh, kind of making some changes to the room as well so yeah i'm blessed with the green screen at the moment but uh, we're going to be moving things around so um welcome to the growth show we should probably say that right yeah thanks to everyone who's, who's tuned in we've got a few more dropping in as well um yeah cool so how's i think let's give it a couple of minutes before we yeah. before we kick off but yeah. um yeah how's how's um how's your week been fantastic yeah yeah, yeah. it's um uh, aside from aside from the traffic being back to pre-COVID levels, I think, here in Dubai. Um, it seems like everybody is back into town now and there's more people coming in, obviously, for the expo, which is yeah. uh, getting live in, whatever, less than two weeks now, right? Yeah, exciting um, times, actually. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's booming. It's, uh, yeah. So I, I had an in-person event yesterday, which was, um, which is, I'd say, fairly big for kind okay. of COVID standards. So yeah, there was yeah. about 300 people there. Oh, okay. Um, Am I safe sitting this close to you? Do you know what? So actually probably not if i'm honest with you because uh because i've been to some of these events um over the last maybe six months or so yes and um there was definitely less space between people it's allowed now right because they've changed the rules yeah yeah so so it was almost like um actually it's quite funny the venue you'll you'll know so it was at uh, Haptor city Mm -hmm. at la pearl which is which is bizarre so for those of you not in dubai or the uae yeah, it's like Cirque du Soleil. Mm. And it's purpose-built. It's kind of made for one show, like the whole venue. Yeah. Uh, so I was chatting to one of the guys there yesterday. I said, look, you guys kind of changed the show because last time I came was about two years ago. Yeah. And we're like, it's really difficult because we basically created the stage and everything well, that for one show. that one show. Right. So trying to incorporate changes to the show means we have to change everything, <laughs> which is bizarre. But um, yeah, it was a good, good little venue, uh, except you've got a little lake in the middle of it. Helpful. Don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah. So even your conference setup is basically um, still got like still got like perfect. Yeah. So and and it was literally one of them where if you are you know you see someone across the room and you haven't seen them for a while, which we haven't, and you kind of give them a wave and walk towards each other, you'd probably end up in a little bit of trouble. But uh, end up in the drink. Yeah, it's funny. Good, good, good little uh, event venue. But I mean, just I think the point is is uh, obviously like you mentioned with uh, Expo starting soon and. Yeah. Um, and across the world, we're seeing, you know, a lot more things kind of returning yeah. to normal now, right? Um, you know, yeah, it's... Gas Pro's on this week as well. Exactly, gas yeah. Pro. Or the, so the, the trade expo. center apparently is just super yeah. busy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So this yeah, event yeah, is normally at the trade center, right? right which okay. is why they had to move it because they're saying, look, yeah. we're kind of busy again now. So yeah, with Jitex yeah. is coming up as well, right? Next month. So, so interesting. Um, I don't think we'll have any impact on numbers here. <laughs> but, uh, but it's certainly opening up <laughs> let's leave it at that that's good that's good to hear um, uh, cool so look i think we've got a few more people coming in now so welcome to those of you who just joined obviously this is our weekly growth show we had a couple of weeks uh, break but we're back kind of uh, with a new season as it were um so thank you for watching and listening we get uh, kind of podcasters that kind of jump in from all over the world actually which is pretty cool um so i mean what's uh, news wise we usually start off with a couple of bit of news news what's what's caught your eye on it from a news perspective what's out there what's bubbling um well i think first and foremost i think the uh the stock market last night wasn't much fun yeah two and a half percent right so, um, yeah so we'll see how that plays out but uh I, I love how china um you know kind of release information like this you know where you know 
Monaco real estate, real estate entities yeah. maybe in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, green thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, high debt, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then they're on public holidays, so their stock market's uh, closed. Bling. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. so they've got another public holiday today, today. which uh, so the rest of the world is kind of hemorrhaging. <laughs> they're just exactly. kind of, let's, yeah. let's kind of watch this play out and then we'll open our markets <laughs> Apparently Hong tomorrow. Apparently Hong stabilised this morning, so yeah. yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah, I don't know, what, what about you? What's... I'd, I'd start off with a fun one. Um, yeah. Fun, I guess, but potentially dangerous at the same time. Uh, so obviously you've got, uh, here we have like Deliveroo, back home Deliveroo. Uh, in the States, their kind of big go-to is DoorDash as far as, uh, you know, kind of getting things to your door, I imagine. Um, and they say now that they are delivering alcohol uh, in, in 20 states. Okay. So I'd, I think... That's quite interesting, but it's not only from uh, like groceries and, you know, kind of you need a couple of cans of special brew. Um, it's it's restaurants. So you can kind of order, you know, kind of decent bottle of wine or okay. perhaps, a, you know, decent whiskey or something. Uh, so I thought it was quite cool uh, just how that kind of demand based uh, apps are still thriving. Yeah. So even though we're all kind of coming out of our cave. Um, yeah, it will be quite nice to sit on your, you know, your lounge and just, uh, just kind of order, ordering a couple of cold, ice cold beers, right? Yeah, interesting. Um, I mean, it's, it's obviously here in this part of the world, the, the rules are very strict. Um, but quite interestingly, there was a, a, an alcohol delivery service that they did start during COVID, um, to kind of help people, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, you know, kind of have that. But, uh, yeah, it's just interesting. I just, I just thought it was, I thought it was quite, I thought it was, quite interesting because even though um they've done this they've basically um you know tied up with you know anti-drink driving anti-drink driving no you wouldn't yeah. be anti-drink driving you, you wouldn't be against it. it you would be yeah you would be against it, it. sorry anti-drink driving measures um you know just to make sure that obviously that's it but also obviously you've got so there's a booze delivery service in the states that i didn't know about um uber bought drizzle I guess a reference to, you know, yeah. Drake, um, but it's called Drizzle and uh, Uber bought it for 1.1 billion, uh, which is interesting. And Instacart and Postmates, which is their other big one, all do the alcohol deliveries. Right. So, yeah, I just thought it, was, I thought it was interesting, you know, what you can get to your door now. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed that uh, we obviously have CAFU in this part of the world for, for petrol or gasoline. And I'm amazed that there isn't that isn't kind of being explored in other parts yeah. of the world yet. No, true. I mean, um, again, it's just going to be a growing space, right? Yeah. So, yeah, interesting. And Twitter's in the news? Yeah, this is uh, this is something that you and I have spoken about probably for the last, what, five years? Yeah. Um, so it looks as though someone's kind of finally tweaked. Uh, so the investors uh, are going after going after Jack and Jack and his guys at the moment, um, basically for falsifying engagement, uh, eng engagement metrics. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, across the ad platform, uh, this is heavily involved in bots. It's, it's been a, it's been a real challenge for Twitter, um, over the years where, you know, advertisers and yeah. investors are paying, uh, to, to run across the platform and effectively you're paying for engagement, which is fictitious, right? For want of a better word. Yeah. No, I mean, look, we have spoken about, I, I I was, I was thinking about this earlier. I was like, do we kind of go into it? I think we probably should a little bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So a friend of ours, um, a mutual friend of ours, uh, a guy called uh, Jeff uh, Goldberg, super interesting guy. Yeah. You probably won't find him on Twitter because um, they kicked him off and gave him a lifetime ban. Yeah. But, but he actually um, owns and runs a business called Social Forensics outside, uh, based out of New York. Um, and what's, what's kind of interesting about this guy is he's... He came across, um, he's, he's a you know, super smart dude, um, really kind of deep into his numbers and, and really kind of digging deep in terms of what, what social numbers actually yeah. mean and things like that. And he kind of unearthed um, a number of things that sort of concerned him um, many years ago now, right? And, and I mean, it was like four or five years ago, right? Yeah, and he was talking about, look, he, you know, he kind of was one of the first to start saying, listen, there's a whole bunch of... Um, sort of sex predators on um on twitter mm. um you know that's kind of almost going unnoticed and he kind of you know built out this really complex network to try and understand who these people were because mm. a lot of them were hiding behind bots as you said mm. Mm. and then as he started kind of digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper you know started to see many other challenges and, and some of those were 
linked to election results in the US. Yeah. Um, the Trump election was was also one of the things that got identified, um, where essentially he was seeing um, a number of automated bots uh, that were not just you know pretending to be normal average Americans, yeah. Yeah. but were actually uh, in some instances were actually rep, you know replicating or pretending to be actual institutions within America. Mm-hmm. And what he found is um, it was very kind of right wing in terms of messaging. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you start digging deeper and start to connect all the dots, you start to understand actually where is this all coming from, right? And he kind of even identified three or four senators who he felt and had enough evidence for that were almost behind this, right? Mm-hmm. But paying for some of this activity, yeah, yeah, right? Because there was a whole load of kind of propaganda being shared. Mm. A lot of it, like I said, was very kind of right wing and, and kind of almost semi extremist views. Mm. Um, so he identified all of these things. He's, you know, contacted Jack Dorsey, the C-suite. He was, uh, very, very aware of him. Um, and, um, and, and, and literally said, look, you guys have got an issue. You need to fix this. He said, the biggest issue you guys have got is actually all these bots and that you kind of claim to be real users, users yeah. aren't real people. That's right. And I can tell they're bots and they're like, well, how can you tell they're bots? He's like, cause they're tweeting 28,000 times a day. <laughs> you know for starters right yeah um that's the first point right so he was like mm. you know so and, and he's he said there's there's just hundreds and mm. hundreds of thousands if not millions of these things that are out there mm. you know retweeting sharing messages mm. uh posting messages um and he said it's very challenging because if you've now got a young generation of people who are who are you know using this information and they look at someone and they say, mm. oh, this guy looks credible. He's got, mm. you know, a thousand followers or whatever it, it is. Yeah. Um, you start to sh- change the mindset of mm. young people. Now, mm. if that mindset shift is towards the right, mm. um, what you're doing potentially is embedding, you know, views that mm. aren't necessarily real views. Mm. Um, but you're now, you know, getting this out there to the mass audience, right? Right, yeah. And now if people in their 20s are now kind of more extreme and more right wing, well, is that likely to change when they're in their 40s and 50s? Potentially not. So what you're doing is maybe uh, impacting, you know, elections and all that kind of stuff, not just for now, but maybe over the next next 30, 40 years. So it's scary stuff. So, um, but yeah, so like I said, sometimes they don't like hearing the reality and they they ended up kicking him off Twitter. But But, I mean, the interesting thing is they're still like, they're, they're denying it. I mean, they're just flat. Still denied, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really still deny, deny, deny. I mean, they've gone a very Trump-esque uh, manner in yeah. just deny, deny, deny. Um, I mean, it points back to 2014. That's basically where um, it kind of it comes in. So, yeah, it, it said uh, Twitter embarked a shell game where it tried to conceal user engagement from investors. Right. Um, and obviously, user engagement is a key metric of growth. And and, and so, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty frightening stuff. I, I remember, I think it was, I think we're in South by where there was there was a guy talking about cyber terrorism and he was saying how potentially you could manipulate the twitter environment at that stage by creating hundreds of thousands of fake users all centrally located in say london Mm -hmm. and then literally just start a what was that noise i can see something and then just gradually switching off accounts and he said in a matter of minutes you could create absolute chaos yeah with nothing yeah out of nothing because obviously people see it in real time and i think interestingly enough twitter is still one of those platforms that that we go to Mm -hmm. right so so with some if news is breaking you know you you kind of jump on there and see and it may be sports it may be you know kind of news in the media but you tend to jump on that still um but uh yeah yeah scary stuff really yeah no totally agree should we uh, should we crack on with the show? Definitely. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's lean into it. Yeah. All right. So so this is the first um, kind of episode of our of summer series, right? Oh, yeah. No, not summer series. Sorry. We finished off our summer series. Obviously. Yeah. yeah we're, we're back to school now. Back to school. So yeah. um, very much kind of in line with um, with I guess some of the requests that we're seeing. It's always this time of year, yeah. right? Q yeah. um, four heading to, into Q one. Right. Yeah. So so it's always that's yeah these last kind of three or four months of a year where people start thinking about what they want to do next year yeah um and invariably we've kind of tracked this over a number of years Mm. but the number of um inquiries we still get for people wanting a new website yeah exactly 
<laughs> that always kind of creeps up towards the end of the year because other mm. people are kind of looking at it saying, okay, look, this looks a bit old fashioned now. Yeah. Maybe I need a refresh. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I felt that this was maybe quite a nice topic to kind of really dig into because yeah. I think the challenge with um, the challenge with websites and I think anyone who's kind of been involved in building a new website um, I think it's fair to say no one enjoys that experience, right? Uh, no, I think you enjoy it for about a week. You get super excited. Right. You get a new website. Yeah, let's have a look at designs. And then, yeah, it, it goes cold pretty fast. Yeah, because, you know, yeah. there's a process, right? You exactly. Know, you, you see exactly, right? You see some designs and yeah. you think, great, this is exactly yeah. what I'm looking for. And then, you know, for, for, you know, what I think a lot of people, less so now, but definitely in the olden days, um, and we can say olden days. You can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can say olden days um people would you know kind of almost say great i love a design yeah great let's just get it live and we're like yeah. well kind of there's a process that we have to go through yeah and and i think part of that challenge has been time okay yeah. because mm -hmm. you know there is a lot of sort of technical elements required when building a new website you know whether it's sort of converting a design into html yeah uh, the building of a, you know, a CMS mm -hmm. and then maybe SEO optimizing a website and yeah. blah, 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 right? All the content and all of those elements. And so, you know, even some of the most kind of simplest web projects can, you know, sometimes take anywhere between maybe one to three months, right? And, and like, like what you said, it's, it's super exciting in the beginning and then you get busy, sidetracked. And, and then after that, you kind of like, okay, where's my website? Yeah not happening anytime soon i'm going to move on to the next project that's right and so people do you know tend to kind of lose lose interest in it and and i think what's happened in that process is i think up until recently there's not really been an alternative right so mm. if you're a professional web developer or a development agency it's just a process that you've got to go through yeah. yeah and if you don't go through that process then ultimately you're maybe not delivering the best quality product yeah but because of that time that gets lost i think what's happened is um is you know, web developers have, have got a bad rep, right? I think in, in terms of, you know, people are like, you know, the whole process, because the whole process is frustrating. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, that just kind of creates almost like this negative energy towards towards the industry, I guess, more than yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, right? definitely, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so I think, I think what's happened over the last few months, and I think this is what we want to kind of go through yeah. with you guys, is, is just, and it's not the last few months, the last few years, there's been a real mm -hmm. shift and it's been a, a shift, I think, which has been driven by marketers. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because I think some of the challenges and frustrations are also from IT. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Where maybe IT professionals are perhaps getting involved in a web development process when really a website is a marketing tool and yep. not, not necessarily an internal IT tool. Yeah, there's right? been that there's been that there's been that transition, right? There's definitely been a transition that that you know, we go back five years. You're having a lot of conversations with IT, um, uh, essentially around business decisions, right? Because ultimately, the web is, you know, your shop window, right? And it should be selling for you effectively, or, or whatever you kind of want it to do. Uh, but it should at least be working for you. And what's happened is, you know, people have kind of put their hand up, you know, ownership and marketing, and said, "Well, hold on a minute, you know, why are we why are we relying on highly technical people, obviously?" To make decisions about you know business and marketing and it, and it just doesn't doesn't marry right um yeah. so i think that's that's that internal struggle as well right because obviously not only have it seen this being pulled away but their whole industry is changing as well right yeah. from premise based to cloud and that's a whole separate episode i think there's there's now this is something else that's kind of been gradually migrated across yeah and exactly and i think i think there's a couple of other elements as well i think the i think commercial people and i think you know marketers salespeople, c-suite i think people understand today more than ever the commercial value of having a website yes right and i think prior to that um the old mindset which is tick which box. is well it's a tick box online brochure on, exactly that right yeah i think that that kind of old mindset is slowly kind of you know being eradicated you know thank god because yeah because you know ultimately you know the way people used to come to us and say, look, all I need to do is almost replicate this brochure. That's right. Because yeah. this is who we are and this is what we do. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, images, yeah, just kind of find some stock oh, images. That's and, right. And yeah. That's it, right? They, yeah, they yeah. never really used to kind of take it seriously. And I think that's that's obviously evolved and, and you know, people understand today that, look, this is more than just a brochure, yeah. right? Um, and I think when we talk to people, 
we, we say, look, your website is your best salesperson, right? It's your mm. most efficient salesperson. Yeah. In the sense that it's the only salesperson you have that's operating for your business 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't sleep. Right. Yeah. And as long as that salesperson has the right tools, the right information, um, it can it can produce you know incredible results for you, mm, mm. and I think that that's the kind of mindset shift that's been been happening. And I think it's it's all aligned, right? I think yeah. it's that that movement away from you know technical to IT, mm-hmm. um, you know. And and again, if you go back, the evolution of this is you know you used to have a dot mobi site. Do you remember those? Yeah, yeah. yeah so you used to have yeah. a mobile version of the website, which that's is right. completely different to yeah, yeah. your website. Mm. And and I think the way you know all of this has kind of evolved over the last you know five to ten years yeah um is, is all done for a reason right mm. it's you know like so we're, we're now in that point where you know commercial people really kind of understand the value of it yeah i think marketing people always have but yeah. perhaps you know restricted in terms of what they could do yes but now i think when you look at the capabilities of a website a capability yeah. of a media do you know what i mean let's go back six seven years when when someone would say look i need videos on my website mm-hmm. you know you'd have to talk to them about a media server yes right? yeah, yeah, because again yeah, you just yeah. didn't have the capabilities that you have today where, somewhere like easily yeah yeah and you know so all of those kind of mm-hmm. things have moved on and and i think on the back of that now um you know we're in this world where you know businesses marketers you know leaders within within an organization kind of really understand the power of it yeah the second challenge, uh, which I think is really what's been overcome recently now is, okay, speed. Mm-hmm. Okay, because yes, we understand the impact of this, but we live in a digital world, right? And in the digital world, um, things should happen fast. Yeah. So why are we spending three months or in some cases, three years building out a new website, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a company I've just spoken to last few days and um, they're two and a half years into a, into a web build. Into a web build. And, and you're almost like, guys, you do realize whatever you're building and whatever you go live with is going to be out of date, right? That's right. You know, yeah. and, and I think it, that, that kind of challenge that people have is, is what's, yeah. what's, been, what's been fixed. But I don't know. I mean, like, the, the, there's been a real movement, Andrew. And I think, it, I mean, what's your take on that? Oh, no, 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 100% agree. I, I think the thing is the, touching on your last point there, I think that there's always been either a pain or mystique associated to websites. Um, I think that that speed, uh, that speed also impacts um, in a way of not, there's, there's kind of two people that get involved in website builds. There's the person that literally loses interest overnight, you know, okay, cool, good stuff. And then you come back to them and, and then kind of there, there's the other person, which is a bit more of a challenge that while the site's being built, they're continually excited about it. And they're seeing new things and they want to add and they want to change and they want to add and they want to change and they want to add and change. And, and previously the technology hasn't allowed for that as well. So, you know, you've kind of got those two different paths that, that people go upon. So I think that the, the, the speed piece is definitely something that's, that's, you know, impacted web because it's impacted everything else. So if you look at anything associated to digital and we share in our little hack of the week as well you know you can sit here now download an app for free and you can essentially you know build out uh five short videos uh from stock animation graphics you know bang put it up on your website um there's now you know from a mobile application during this uh show we could build a website if we wanted to simple website i think i think we should probably address that and say that we're talking about you know websites that, that for different usage perhaps a corporate site simply commerce site you know we're not talking about building amazon in 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 uh, in obviously you know like an hour right um so i think we have to have to treat that differently but i think for you know majority of, of kind of our our listeners and what and and, and viewers it, this 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 is is kind of you know changing for everyone right yeah and i think i think that's that's just, I think, just so vital moving forward, right? Yeah. You know, so, so for example, today, I think, you know, when we're, when we're looking at, um, you know, websites and things like that, I think it's starting with those goals, right? In terms yes, of, exactly. You know, and working backwards. So, if, so for example, I mean, we have clients that come up to us and say, look, I need a new website. Mm. Um, I want to kind of make sure that, you know, it represents a business well. But ultimately what we want is we want a website that's going to be able to perform for the business and generate leads for exactly. us and things like that, right? Exactly. And and I think the um, and the speed part of that is just so so critical because there's, there's there's another aspect to it, right? Because again, 
the you know websites are still totally subjective right so what me and you might look at as a great website yeah. Yeah. might be seen as somebody else's not a great website because they don't mm. like the look of it yes right they kind of almost get emotionally led right? you know and they look at it and say oh, i don't really know if this is going to work for us yeah yeah ultimately it could be the best website in the world for their business because it's mm. answering all the questions that someone you know potentially is looking for who wants to work with them and then it's making it really easy for them to communicate back right I- I want to jump in on a story there. I don't know if you remember, we still work with them, a very large uh, hotel chain uh, that have a large presence in the UK. And this was a challenge for them because they didn't like their website, but it was delivering incredible business. I think you know who I'm talking yeah. about. You know, and that was a real challenge for them because no one liked the look of the website. <laughs> No one liked the look of it. It, it didn't represent the brand properly. It didn't, um, you know, really kind of deliver the message they wanted to deliver. But on the flip side, it was smashing it from a from a revenue perspective. Yeah. So they had real challenges, right? And obviously, that's when we had to dig in and look at, you know, analytics and data, you know, try and understand what people were doing. So again, instead of being emotionally led by something, you know, kind of picking or cherry picking what was working and then implement that into a new design, right? Yeah, yeah. I remember that well, actually, and I think we've we've had we've had a number of examples like that. Yeah, you know, over time, where where you know, again, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Even from our perspective, mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. a huge fan of our website. No, I know, yeah, I'm not. But it's a money making <laughs> machine. It's a lead machine. It's actually, I can't, you know, so what exactly. do you do, right? So, and and I think actually we're fortunate that the the yeah. environment that we've built the website yeah. on is one which allows us to make changes on the fly. Yes, I don't need to go and speak to. Uh, you know, our, our tech guys or anything no. like that. It's literally a case of, okay, look, let's go in. Mm. That I think can be improved. Mm. Let's just change that now, yeah. right? Yeah. And let's um, measure the impact of that. And, 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 but that's the important thing. So so web has changed in that sense as well. So, you know, you go back and people, a website was a large investment, a serious investment. Yeah. Um, and it still is. But, but, but you know, the because of the technical ability associated to building out these large sites, or mid-range to high sites, um, there was is a big investment. So that meant that big investment only came around like every five years. And that big investment had to be pinpoint perfect before launch. We don't see that now, right? So you 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 don't build to just sit there. It's not it's not a house anymore, right? You know, it's not this kind of you know bricks and mortar and put it up and then don't touch it for a hundred years. That's not how websites work. So you know, the ones that we work on now is that growth driven design, right? So you know that, that that's an interesting dynamic when you're when you're talking to you know, uh, you know business owners and marketeers and marketeers usually get it. We say, listen, we're going to go live. Yeah, but the site's not finished. The site's never going to be finished. Right. right. And and I think that that's a mindset shift as well, where you have to say the website is never going to be finished. Right. It, it's just not you're not going to do a J and say completed it. Right. It's not it's not one of those. You know, it, it really is something that evolves and grows with your business. And back to your point is continual tweaking. Yeah. Right. And, and making minor adjustments to improve either, you know, traffic or conversion or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. And it can't be prohibitive. I think that's the point. Right? So if yeah. you want to make these changes, it can't be. It can't be something that costs the earth and takes too much time. I think exactly, right? and I think those are the two major, uh, ma- major kind of areas of impact, right? So I think let's you know we've the challenges are there. Um, I mean, one more I guess is just that it's it's one of those parts of a business that everyone wants to have eyes on, also, right? Everyone, everyone does have eyes on. Right. More importantly, everyone has eyes on it. Nobody wants to be involved in it. Right. That's right. Yeah, I, think, exactly. I think that's one of it. You know, when we had that kind of internal chat with the team and we say, look, this is it's like laundry in your house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely one of those where, you know, everyone in a, in, in a company, you know, yeah. looks at it. Yeah. No one wants to take responsibility for it. Right. And I think yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah, so, percent. So, um, so, okay. So what's the solution then, Andrew? How's, how's things how's things changed? <laughs> no, no. Look, I think I think what what what's changed now is there's a couple of things that have changed. First and foremost, looking at <clears throat> we're going to talk through some of these platforms that are kind of publicly available now that are spoken about a lot of. Um, I think what's changed is that the the website is is not considered as a standalone part of your business anymore. So, you know, people that are building sites now, and we'll talk about some of these platforms, they've introduced um, introduced everyone to 
what needs to you know feed into the site what you need to take out of the site so you know we've spoken about this before but once your site is live how does it start ranking in the google environment how do i start integrating social media into it how do i integrate payment gateways how do i do this and i think that the the, the shift now um and we'll run through some of the platforms that, that are there um you know how do i connect this to my crm how do i build out uh, a, a kind of solid communication pattern. So if someone fills out a form, what next, yeah. right? Because I think I think that <clears throat> also websites just seem very one dimensional. So now the sites that we have now are are kind of at core of your business. So so as we said, that is the salesman or woman that's working continuously, right, uh, for you. So we need to make sure that that it can do what it says. Um, so, you know, I think things like bots and chats, WhatsApp integrations, uh, integration into CRM, integration into video, as you mentioned, <clears throat> video streaming platforms, uh, all the tracking associated to that as well as so we can pull out. I think that's 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 what's kind of and how it's evolving right so previously it would be like hey listen i'm going to build a website and there's a website that goes live thanks very much and the only time people would go to the website is perhaps when they click on your email signature you know now people realize that's not the case uh we're driving traffic back to the site from google we're driving traffic back to the site from all of our social activation because now companies are more socially active right so they're driving everything back to the site maybe a blog it may be an article it may hey watch this video whatever the case may be but but i think obviously you know now what's changed is is that so if we understand that we now have to look at platforms uh where we build websites that that essentially have that on on a table in front of us right so so we're almost directed from day one have you thought about this have you thought about this have you thought about that have you thought about that right and and i think that you know some of these builders that you know possibly in the past we would have dismissed so i'll give you an example wix um you know if somebody said to me hey listen i built my site on wix I'd be like, okay, great. You know, you're definitely not going to work with this. You, you know, you kind of, you know, I can see you've built on Wix. Um, you know, one of those conversations. I think that conversation doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, Wix, Wix.com, which is is probably one of those website builders. You know, which was leading from 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 the forefront. Um, that's one now where you can build, uh, you know, a comprehensive site on on it. Yeah. Now, you know. It's got that do-it-yourself model and environment, but it's also um, a robust platform to, to build for other people, yeah. right? So it's not it, it, it's moved away from that, hey, listen, I just want to fire up a business myself, to no, people are actually building in a Wix environment now, right? Yeah, and, 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 and I think this is exactly the right thing, right? I mean, so when you, when you look at it, and look, a core part of our business back in 2005 was websites, right? Yes. You know, and, and even today we're still building websites for, right. for clients. But I've got absolutely no issues with with not building any websites for yeah. clients, right? So, yes. if, so say, for example, we've got, you know, clients who are, you know, needing a site. If they say, look, actually, I can go out and I can build one myself and I need to do that because I can do it in a couple of days. Absolutely, right? Go, go for, for it. it. Because, because I think, the, the, you know, the ability to have, you know, to be agile and to be nimble and to yes. basically you know, represent whatever's in your mind on a website quickly, yeah. I think is, is so key. Right. Yeah. And I think this is, um, and, and Wix is really interesting because I think, I think you're right in the early days of Wix, if somebody had come and said to us, I built my site on Wix. Yeah. It would almost be a conversation stopper. Right. Yeah, we'd like, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, you know, yeah, carry exactly. on. Yeah. Whereas, um, you know, whereas today I think you say to them, okay, cool. Why did you choose Wix? Yeah. Um, you know, but you start to have more strategic conversations. That's right. Yeah. And I think that's partly what what was not there before, which is now where you have much more strategic web conversations. Um, but I love the fact that marketers are now getting more power back, right? Mm. And, and for me, I think that's that's should, the should biggest explain, byproduct of this. Should we? Do you want to give up a, a highlight on Wix or these other builders like Squarespace? I think Wix and Squarespace in the web place are probably the most popular. Uh, platforms and mm -hmm. essentially guys um i won't lie the platforms are phenomenal so you know you go in there has imagery sizing drag and drop environments essentially you and i have spoken about this um no code 
low code or no code. It has an environment. If you want to build out HTML, you still can in that platform. But essentially, if you have zero code experience, you can go in there and you can build a website relatively simply. Yeah. So none of this challenge of, you know, uh, what has it look on desktop, how it look on mobile, you have that preview. Um, you know, where do I get images from? They're integrated to an image provider, video provider, right? Everything is kind of at your fingertips uh, that allows you yeah. to do that. Um, I'll let you carry on. I need to get my charger. This is very embarrassing. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Good, good, Please good no, but I think I think <laughs> this is this you could probably for our podcasters, you probably could have got away with that. Actually. So, um, oh, yeah, it, 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 it looks odd, right? If I'm kind of wheeling around in the background, so for whatever reason, my ex decided to amazing. Drop it, guys. So, um, look, I think the, the, the point there is is <laughs> is very much uh, I've got a great scene here. The point here is that, um, we've got you know, obviously, with these kinds of builders. It just works really well. I yeah. think you know the speed is obviously there. The cost is, um, the cost is non-prohibitive, right? So right. a lot of these yep. platforms are kind of you know pay as you go monthly basis. Um, just again, and and a, a, one area which is often overlooked, and and again, I spoke to someone about um, another platform, HubSpot. We'll talk about that in a second. But we, you know, and I mentioned to him yesterday that you pay for a license for the CMS. Yeah. Right, like a Wix, like a Squarespace, uh, mm -hmm. like a HubSpot, yeah. and your hosting is covered. He's like, what? And he's like, what kind of hosting? I was like, you're talking pretty much best in class hosting. Exactly. exactly. The kind of the kind of thing that people are charging, I don't know, a couple of hundred dollars a month yeah. minimum, yeah. right? Yeah. As a, as a kind of uh, service that they're offering to host a website. These guys are incorporating that within, you know, within a, you know, ten dollars a month, twenty dollars a month, fifty dollars a month environment. Yeah. Where actually that one area of, you know, technicality where IT would have to be brought back in. Yeah. Is now also taken care of, right? Yeah. And I think that's that's such a game changer in itself because. Yeah. Again, you know, the, you know, we were talking, you know, you mentioned earlier about, you know, that kind of, you know gray area where you don't really know what's going on but you know there's some you know magical Magic stuff, stuff yeah exactly there. yeah well that's that's what website hosting you know is so yeah we need we need maintenance on that because you know if it goes yeah, yeah. down uh then it's a problem well right. you know these, these are almost like non-challenges now right today so and mm. if it goes down you know with these platforms you've got hundreds of guys that are on it straight away that's right yeah Right, as part of what you're paying anyway. Yeah. So I think I think you know that those kinds of elements I think are really important. But I think to go back to your point earlier about um, the integrated part of the website, right? So it's not just an isolated part of your I don't know your marketing yeah. mix or your part of your kind of you know sales or market mm -hmm. activation. I think what got us really excited about this because Wix and Spares, Squarespace and, and platforms like that have been been around for a while. That's right, right yeah. Um, I think WordPress was one of those which kind of almost wanted to be in that space, but yeah. the fact you Painful. still need designers and WordPress Painful. developers and yeah. stuff, it, it's never really lived up to right. what it should have been, right? We should, we should probably, are you jumping into Shopify? I wasn't, no. Oh, okay. I was just saying, we should probably mention Shopify just okay. before we kind of squeeze away and move into a new Shopify uh has dominated that e-commerce space right so i think you know where wix and and squarespace are very corporate driven or design driven photography whatever you want as a site that's who they tend to lean into you do have uh payment options e-commerce etc in those platforms but shopify are the ones that have kind of taken that on and especially obviously during covid as well um you know where you can here now actually with stripe as well you can so you can set up a shop your online shopping in 10 minutes genuinely um and obviously you've got that ecosystem and one of the things just before you jump into the, the next part is that ecosystem so all of these wix squarespace shopify have this phenomenal uh kind of app environment where other developers can jump in and say oh you want to analyze your conversion of your car i can do that for you here's a plugin 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 but not in the sense of wordpress plugins which are a nightmare and you've got to update them and then it's you know fractal code security problems this just kind of works yeah you know so i thought we should talk about that quite briefly Sorry. no no i think i think that's a great point and i think the um and again the numbers that shopify are producing at the moment uh, is insane. is insane right so so people people are loving this right and they branched yeah. out there i mean they've got they got actual hardware now 
Yeah. So Shopify in the States has POS systems. I mean, you know, you can run it off your phone, obviously, yeah. um, but you can also do that. But, you know, but again, it's, it's, it's another great example because, uh, again, go back go back five or six years and mm. if somebody came to you and said, I need an e-commerce website and I've, oh. got, I've got 500 products. Yeah. I mean, you're talking the best part of maybe a six to nine month build. That's right. Right. Exactly. Because, you know, it just takes, and, and part of that would be the payment gateway. Payment gateway would yes. be at least three right. months of that, right? Headache. Yeah. You know, because you'd have to build a site, you'd have to submit the site to them mm. for approval and they'll come back with changes. And, and it was just so, so frustrating. Yeah. You know, that whole experience was, was frustrating. But I think with Stripe now or Shopify, like you said, you know, you can be up and running so quickly. Yeah, I think yeah that's, exactly. That's a game changer. I think look, actually and Shopify kind of does merge quite nicely into the next part of it because, yeah, yeah. because I think from a, you know, any of these platforms now, whether it's a website, whether it's an e-commerce site, um, the power of these platforms now are in the data, right? Mm, and we're not mm. talking about Google Analytics and, and again, you know, things which most people don't really kind of understand or have time to understand, mm. but we're talking about the actual real kind of data, right? What, what kind of, you know, what, sales are being generated what leads are being generated um how do i understand the journey that these leads have taken how do i kind of use these website leads that have been generated yeah. and how do i kind of you know convert them into customers yes you know how do i kind of communicate with them how do i kind of track their activity across my website so that i can you know make meaningful decisions on the back of it and i think that's where where hubspot has really kind of got mm. us excited right to mm. go back to what i said earlier you yeah know, yeah all of these other platforms have been around for a while. Shopify, I think, has just been exciting anyway because, yeah. because of just that speed component. Um, but HubSpot and I think some of the changes that they made over the last sort of, you know, over a longer term period, a couple of years, but I'd say more so over the last couple of months, um, I just feel as if that's a real kind of industry game changer. Mm. And again, that same person I was chatting to yesterday about the hosting, uh, that said to me, this is like, I've never seen anything as powerful as this for, you know, $60 yeah. a month. For no money. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, and he didn't even realize the hosting wasn't even a part of it. Right. right, right, right. You know, it was a part of that. Sorry. Like yeah. it was nuts. Um, but ultimately what we now have are these, I would say is the real kind of modern day website ecosystem, which is natively connected to a CRM yep. natively connected to your uh, marketing suite whether that's kind of social stuff, yeah. uh, you know, whether that's uh, email marketing, whether it's kind of, you know, landing pages, the data collection and the insights and all of those different things in there. Um, but not just connected to all of that, but now also connected to, you know, natively to things like chatbots, um, yeah, exactly. you know, other kind of yeah. data collection methodologies yeah. I and mean, then your forms. I mean, they like all of those elements without even, go, you know, touching upon things like customer service and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And, and whereas before you'd almost have to have five or six different kind of systems That's right, that yeah. did this and then you'd have to kind of integrate them and hope that yeah. it worked well. Yeah, yeah. The fact, I think, that HubSpot um, launched their um, CMS starter product, um, I think, towards the end of July, early August, yeah. I think has just really, uh, really kind of changed things. And I think they've, they've moved the goalposts even further away, um, you know, from, you know, your traditional kind of IT-driven websites, yeah. right? Um, but it's, I think... I mean, it's just so incredibly powerful. Yeah, right? I think, look, I think there's a comfort level as well associated to to kind of looking at HubSpot as a, as a content management system as well. So, you know, like the, the, the kind of Wix of the world and the Squarespace, again, their their focus has been kind of entrepreneurial. It's It's been uh, possibly more leaning to B2C space. Um, but but that B2B play now with, with you know, what HubSpot have to offer, as you said, it's, it's more of a focus on what, what to do with the traffic uh, and the contacts that you create on the site uh, once you've got them there. Yeah. So I'd almost say that the the other platforms are very much focused on you know making your website look good, work for you, um, but but it but it kind of it, they don't really push on these platforms and look, you and I have accounts on them. We, we keep up to date with it. I mean, that's quite frankly, the reason that during COVID, I just wanted to build out a couple of sites. So I kind of jumped on these to see how easy it was. And that's when I was blown away how, how phenomenal they are. I mean, they have a very Canva-esque feel about them, right? Where it's kind of just drag and drop and that. Um, but still, you, you know, there, there's that 
that element associated. And I think what's interesting with that is the new um, partnership with like GoDaddy. So, you know, like GoDaddy, interestingly, obviously, I mean, still one of the largest, but horrible hosting, but largest domain, uh, you know, providers globally, they're, they're now partnering with HubSpot uh, to offer, you know, kind of CRM and some of the kind of introductory functions associated to HubSpot. And, and for sure, that has to be, you know, leaning into the fact next step is, well, okay, look, just build the website yeah. in HubSpot, right? Um, you may as well. And, and I think it's important, you're, you're talking there about the starter and how that you know plays into this space but obviously with professional and enterprise um hubspot in one foul swoop have gone after the entire uh kind of website space right yeah. from from your wix squarespace all the way up to something like a site core or sitefinity which for those of you who don't know is you know insane amount of investment right you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in in some of these sites and they've kind of gone set their sights on everyone yeah or it feels like that right yeah no it's 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 a it's a really strong move but i think just what what i realized we haven't really said is so how do you kind of, what does this actually mean, right? So in terms yeah. of, okay, you know, they've introduced this and, and things like that, but what does that actually mean? We've, um, we played around with this. I think this, the, we, we had obviously had a, a sneak preview of a system yeah. uh, provided to us by HubSpot. And so the only way to really kind of test it out is, okay, let's build a website. Yeah. Right, let's just see how exactly, long this yeah. takes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so one of our kind of side projects, we, we built a, uh, a, a simple site. So it's about yeah. 10, 10, 11 pages. Um, and the goal of that project was, okay, how quickly can we build a new website yeah. Yeah. using HubSpot features? Do we need any kind of uh, IT or specialist kind of involvement in that? Okay. And if so, how much do we need? Yeah. And um and then the final part is how does that, how quickly does that then integrate into the CRM? So data collection, yeah. um, reporting dashboards, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think I started the project one evening, must have been about five, six o'clock. And I think I was pretty much done by about 10.30. Right. 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 So in a space of about four and a half hours, very simple website. Yeah. But the point is the forms were fully integrated with the CRM. Mm. Uh, I could run marketing campaigns on the back of all of that data that was being yeah, created. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you start to kind of look at even semi-complex sites, um, you know, you, when we're now talking about getting sites out there within the spaces, you know, space of a week or two, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, at the very most. And, and again, you know, for companies that want to be dynamic, they want to kind of, you know, get their information out there. If they spot an opportunity, they don't want, they don't want to take six weeks to then build out a website to, no, no. to take advantage of an opportunity. I mean, this is just, um, this is almost like, you know, the ultimate. And actually, we, I think we've got a, a more comp we've tested it with a more complex site today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is about to go live today. So, so again, I think you know, if you guys want to have a look at some of the capabilities, this is very much a B two C site. Yeah. But now has every aspect of HubSpot fully integrated, and that's uh, thirty sleeps dot com. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and again, I'd kind of advise you guys have a you know, if you're interested, have a play around with that because again, it will give you an idea as to actually what some of these uh, capabilities are. But that's a HubSpot, which is uh, built within the, uh, sorry, a website which is built within the HubSpot ecosystem yeah. and integrated with every HubSpot tool out there. And uh, yeah. again, something like that site would typically be, um, you know, would typically be, I don't know, six months to a 12 month yeah, rollout, easily. right? Because yeah. it's a platform you're building. Exactly. Uh, whereas again, this was this was kind of completed in, in a matter of weeks. So Yeah, I mean, in all honesty, the, the, it used to, time used to be, uh, you know, uh, a, a difficult component in website builds for two reasons. Uh, one was, you know, from the people that were getting it built. Um, and then the other part was the technical piece. The technical piece is, is effectively now, you know, an afterthought, right? Yeah. Um, unless you're doing kind of complex tasks, as we said, uh, for the majority of corporate sites or B2C sites, you know, that you can build this out. I think the one thing that's interesting um, it's still the individuals involved in the project. So I think that's still one thing that even though the desire and the capability may be there to build a website in five hours, like you said, I think the challenge usually is the individuals involved in building that out. No, no, of course. And yeah, and look, any, any example I ever give about something I do is always typically extreme. But, but yeah, no, no, I get you. I get you. Because I think, I think the thing is that obviously, uh, you, you know, the what this allows you to do is it just, I think, 
these 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 builders that are now available now with this kind of low code or no code um it, it it's really it, it it's really a, a kind of turning point in the sense that you know now now things can be changed on the fly so going back to you know that that individual where it was okay i don't I, i'm always actively involved in the project can i move this can i move this can i move this yeah you can now right so there are things you, you can change you can dynamically uh you know update and more importantly you've got the data to back up if that change is justified right or valid so i think the thing is that you know you're really you you're really kind of changing and revolutionizing and i think i think it's almost i mean websites for the most part have been boring right people don't it's almost like a necessity right it, it kind of moved in that into that groove where uh, it's a website it's boring uh, you know just go and do it and you know and i think with now the capabilities and the integration so much into the business um it's exciting again right so it's kind of excited people and we're seeing that right we're seeing a change where people don't want to be involved in a website whereas previously they would have been like, come and speak to me in four weeks when it's done no they want to understand you know what it can do and how it can do and they they're starting as you said at the beginning they're starting to realize the power of it yeah. right so really starting to realize the power of it absolutely so look, we've had a, we've had a couple of questions in um thanks frank and binny um can you send us a little bit more context if you can just type that that through um so so that we can tackle that question that you've asked but uh yeah a little bit more context of information would be super yeah, useful. yeah we should have said actually look guys so we, uh, we forgot to mention the beginning of the show um you know if you're watching live obviously we appreciate you guys watching live if you've got any questions or or kind of jump in we've got q a we've got chat on there um that, that obviously we're we're kind of actively monitoring uh and then obviously for the people that uh, that are listening on the podcast you can always uh email uh growth show at digitalnexa.com so or i mean catch up with me on linkedin yeah. um so so i mean i i think if 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 this is kind of you know the beginning Amit, of this change where where do you kind of see this moving towards do 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 and i know i'm asking the question in a very kind of traditional sense in the fact that if i wanted a website previously I would go to an agency, I would then do this, I would do that. How do, how do you see this changing? Okay, I think, I think if we fast forward maybe three years from now, I don't think much is going to change really between now and the next couple of years because it just takes time for people yeah. to, yeah. to kind of realize what's going on and how it can benefit them, right? And I think that's part of the challenge for all of these companies, whether it's a Wix or a HubSpot. Yeah. How do you kind of really educate people, you know, in terms of the benefits of this and, you know, it's people like us, I guess, who are going yeah, to drive yeah, that. Yeah. But it takes time, right? So if mm -hmm. we if we look at it, um, say for years from now, I feel as if that's where the real impact is going to be. Okay. You know, where I think you know again that education will start to kind of seep through. Um, the ultimate, I think, in all of this is that marketers, uh, business owners can build a website with no involvement from any kind of third party. Yeah. Right. yeah that's really yeah. that's really where you want to get to yeah um where where marketers and, and people like ourselves for example can add value is more in that consultancy piece mm -hmm. okay cool you've got this how do you kind of maximize, how do you make it work yeah, yeah. how do you yeah. how do you ma maximize the impact of that yeah, yeah and i feel that's where that transition is going to be mm -hmm. there'll obviously always be people that don't want to build a website even if they can true yeah right and they yeah. will want to just work with experts to do that yeah that's fine as well right yeah, and I yeah think that, exactly. that will always kind of coexist with this but yeah, i feel yeah. as if certainly for kind of smaller businesses um maybe less so kind of mid-sized and larger businesses mm. um i do feel that kind of self-serving environment is going to is going to the one caveat to that and i think this is maybe which will speed up some of that change is i is when people realize that actually having a fully integrated website mm. with your crm with your marketing tools mm. with other sales mm. tools once you have that and the power of that yeah. sort of creates i think that's where people will certainly look at uh hubswap type yeah, solutions yeah. right and not necessarily just hubswap but yeah you know the type of solution that that gives you everything no we it, it, yeah. yeah it there's a lot of frankenstein sites out there right a lot of them you know frankenstein has said lots of different parts uh even on the front end let alone the kind of back end and then when you yeah. kind of dig into the business itself 
and, and kind of look at that. I mean, int interestingly, at the moment, talking about speed to market, you know, we have uh, one of our clients, large multinational company, their new site went live in the US um, last week. And the rollout globally, which I still don't understand, I'll be honest, uh, is going to be a year, hmm. which which shocks me, quite frankly. Uh, brand new design change, image, yeah. functionality, everything. So, you know, there's still there's there's still that I, I don't know. I guess um, I guess at the very top end of investment when it comes to you know kind of global multinational sites, yeah. uh, a year to to roll out a change, and it's a risk. Yes, I mean you look at that. Yeah. So much can change within that year. Right? Totally. Your your team can decide to go work elsewhere, That's it. right? Who That's takes it. that over? Yeah, um, you know the technology risk is is a, is another risk, right? Exactly. You know, so yeah. You, so there's, there's there's so much, and I think that's where speed really comes in and solves so many of these issues. Mm -hmm. You know, because you know the, the short of a time something takes, you know, in this world at least, yeah. the risk is you know substantially less. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I feel I feel that's super important. Andrew, we've got four minutes. Uh -huh. you've, got, you've got a hack of a week? I don't, actually. Ah. <laughs> interested. Excellent. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's interesting. That's what uh, happens when we uh, don't have a show for two weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, a little bit um, rusty. That's, that's, yeah, sorry, guys. I don't actually have a hack of a week. Um, that's a bit frustrating. I thought I'd put one in there, but, uh, but it isn't. I'll give you two hacks of a week next week. Okay. Uh, how about well, one thing? One hack I would say. Um, not necessarily a hack, but if you do want to just kind of test, uh, test, test uh, one of these platforms, download uh, download Squarespace mo mobile app, and you can build a website in literally four minutes. It's quite fun. So I'd say have a look at that. And uh, and look, we haven't we've spoken about this a lot, um, but but Canva just had an insane evaluation. Um, valuation. Sorry, sorry, valuation. Insane valuation. Uh, if you're not, if you not, or you haven't looked at Canva, definitely go and have a look at Canva. Canva is now forty billion dollars. Uh, yes, well, yeah. But Canva also has a website builder functionality on there as well, really so you can build out web pages. So that's why I was kind of backlinking into. You know, one of the early investors in that. Uh, what's his name? Do? Right, uh, Guy Kawasaki. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember him going up on stage at South by South. By South yeah, I just I've just kind of got involved with this company and. Um, he was a brand ambassador, right? Yeah, it was just, but um, but yeah, phenomenal product. My hack yeah. of a week, Andrew, is if you're ever going to do a live webinar, make sure your laptop's plugged. Okay, in. so what I can do, I would love to share my, so so this battery was full 100%. It dropped down to 20 and it's come up with a service recommendation. So actually I have a problem with my battery, guys. So uh, yeah, my apologies for that. I, I do have a technical issue as it were, but yeah. Wonderful. At least I didn't like bend over that way. <laughs> well, to, 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 I, I was concerned. <laughs> that, like, nobody needs to see that. <laughs> Perfect. Good awesome. Stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to everyone for tuning in. If you're listening on the podcast, uh, thanks for doing so. Share it with your friends because we're getting we're getting enormous um, amounts of listens for the podcast. I know it's funny that we don't we don't really actively encourage people to tell people about our show, but no. I guess we should start to do that now. We're doing it for a year, right? So. It's uh, yeah, share it with your friends, get it out there, put it on the on your own socials. We we kind of push it out there as well. Um, but but we've got some mad listenership listenership all across the world as well, yeah. which is pretty cool. No, no, it's great, it's really exciting. Yeah. Um guys, also if you have any questions, if you've got any topics, yeah. so next next few weeks, we're gonna stick to the web topic, but yeah. really gonna get much more sort of tactical now yeah. in terms of right, how do you maximize uh, lead generation exactly. how do you maximize sales exactly um you know things like that which i think are going to be really kind of important for people um i think the world is now kind of evolving into a much more kind of open place again yeah. um which i think presents lots of opportunities i think certainly from a kind of positivity aspect yeah exactly um there's going to be some good business happening so so yeah tune in to kind of you know hear our thoughts on how to take advantage of this stuff i think all of the stuff that we'll be sharing with you is tried and tested Probably. which is yeah. what we do we don't we don't kind of come here and talk hypotheticals no. it's very much like we've tried this this worked this perhaps didn't work exactly. as well um but we'll be kind of you know sharing sharing as much as we can on that um but yeah i guess that's it right perfect yeah thanks Amit. bang on the hour uh guys as Amit said uh you can find us on linkedin so both Amit and i are on linkedin 
Uh, so kind of reach out to us there. Uh, but thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch you next week. Thanks, Amit. Cheers. Bye-bye.